basically uh, going back to the history of our members who were harassed or under the hands of the Zamba Police Service. And uh, you are saying we wouldn't want to slide back to those dark days of seeing members being harassed. And um, our standing orders equally provide uh, for privileges of members of parliament. And one of the privileges is such that a member must not be uh, in any way prevented from performing his duties without the consent of the speaker. So, now the contradictions. The Honorable Minister of Local Government was uh, uh, giving assurances that no one should be harassed. The Minister of Home Affairs also comes with his own uh, contradictory position. I must make it very clear that uh, members are, 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 do not demand, are not demanding for any immunity which they don't have. Members like other citizens are subjective to the same laws that other citizens are subjective to. And so it's not the question of members avoiding to be arrested if they breach the law, but the manner in which members are treated is what is uh, uh, being contested. You are called honorable members. Some um, honorable members and have been ministers. By entitlement, you go and get those gunshots when someone has died. It's, it's, it's a show of respect that someone has earned for saving the nation. So why shouldn't that same respect be accorded to these citizens when they are still alive? So. All the members are demanding for is to be treated as leaders who are well known. There are only about 50, 155. And we are not just saying opposition members. It's members of parliament across board. So the uh, issue of abducting members like a common criminal does not make sense at all. And that's what the, the report was condemning. So Honorable Jack Mumbu should not justify wrongdoing because we, you, you, you all remember the, the complaints they, they, they had as opposition. They are in government today. They are not going to be in government forever. Okay, so the same police service which was there when MMD was in government, when PF was in government, is the same Zamba police service. So we must encourage them to do their work professionally. What's wrong with saving a member of parliament so that the speaker who assigns members to do duties is able to plan that a member is not going to be available at this point of time, point in time, because of the police wanting to interact with the, 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 the honorable member of parliament. So the members are not asking for special rights that they don't have but they do have privileges. That's the end when they are, they, they are elected by the fellow citizens. And so to see him uh, wanting to justify wrongdoing is wrong in itself. And we expect the Minister of Home Affairs to be above board, being a lawyer himself, and uh, knowing that uh, today's minister, like ours, tomorrow there will be someone else. And so two hours of duty begin and end. Lastly, we just want to comment on the court ruling that came out of the court, uh, the, the constitutional court. You saw the consent judgment which the Attorney General uh, entered into with the 35 police officers who were removed from the, the police service and removed from the payroll before they could get their entitlement. We warned them that they are breaching the constitution even then. All of you have seen the, 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 that cause and judgment. It's now cause for government to reinstate those police officers on the payroll and pay them their arrears with interest. So government is now made to, pay, to, 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 to start paying interest which they shouldn't have been paid. It's a waste of resources. Dr. Peter Machungwa, you yourself have decided to be relegated from former Minister of Home Affairs 
to go and be chairman of a police service commission. If it was me, I would retire and go sit in Swangando in the first place. Two, you should not politicize that institution. That's why we have always taken people that understand the police service in the past to chair that police service commission because they know the affairs of the police. How can you get the politician to be chairperson and you, own, you get someone to, to deputize him who has, only, who has got the only qualification of being a former wife to a police officer? How does it work? Go and ask them if you think I'm lying. Dr. Peter Machungwa, a politician, former minister of home affairs, has this accepted to be reduced to go and be chairperson of one that component of home affairs. How? So, we are calling upon you to stop harassing members of the Zambia police. Those police officers joined the Zambia police when you Peter, Dr. Peter Machungwa was minister of home affairs. How can they become cadres today? These are senior officers that have invested their time, their careers in serving the nation as police officers. It had to take the constitutional court to interpret the constitution that they were not supposed to be removed from the payroll before they got their entitlement. And we commend the Attorney General for not wasting court's time. But you uh, go further and ensure that the system restores them before you get people ignoring that judgment. So I want to just end by encouraging the new Inspector General of Police. You heard the report which we tabled in Parliament of and which pointed to the frustrations of officers who feel that the command should not be taken from retirement. But you are already there. So what you need to do is to ensure that you motivate your officers. Work with them. Let's not abuse officers who are professionals. Like I've said, two hours of duty come and they go. I thank you. Uh, there is one element I think which Honorable Campion will be uh, touch on, which would be so much of interest to you journalists, the issue of uh, the cyber security bill. Because if we are not careful, I think this is one bill which would make most of us journalists being arrested because of maybe one or two issues. Uh, let me once again ask the Honorable Campion just to say one or two issues concerning the, the cyber security bill. I think, Honorable, actually, it's something that already uh, our chairperson did has spoken to. Um, yesterday, you recall that we were adopting a report uh, of our committee responsible for broadcasting and communication. And uh, they had a, a topic they covered, which was the role of Zikta in preventing cybercrime. I must say that we are glad uh, that uh, the New Dawn government has now appreciated the rationale behind the introduction of the Cyber Act of 2021, Cyber Act number two of 2021, because uh, we in government did realize that there were a number of crimes that were emerging uh, in the cyberspace. The only unfortunate part is the selective enforcement of that act which our colleagues have uh, uh, are undertaken. Why do I say so? And just like I spoke yesterday in Parliament, is that there are certain crimes that they are ignoring and they are quick to act on certain um, uh, uh, crimes. And I cited examples even yesterday that if any one of you calls me on my mobile line, we have a discussion, and without my consent, you record me, at that point you are breaching the law. You record me without my consent, you are breaching the law. Worse still, if you circulate what I have discussed with you, 
online without my consent it's also further breaking of the law now members of the public who do recall that there were two senior government officials who recorded each other when they were discussing the deregistration of political of certain political party a permanent secretary and an advisor to the president and that discussion went viral it's not like the way they are discussing our registration. You have never heard of anyone being called to police under the same law to go and get answerable. Recently, you heard of a conversation between the head of state and the minister of a province discussing distribution of mess from FRA. And it was an extensive discussion. As we speak today, we have never heard of anyone being called by police to be accountable. And in fact, presidential discussions must be at the apex. So if it can't concern you that the presidential discussion of distributing maize needs to be investigated, you want to start uh, apportioning Brem. I don't know if you are saying it's a PF that was in that discussion. So, we want to see the law enforcement agencies enforce that law on everyone. Because that's what the law is. It shouldn't have a face. But lastly, you have seen me as a whip uh, standing next to um, our Honorable MP for Chamara South, Honorable Mungandu. To our members, is just to assure you that uh, the Honourable Member is to be a bona fide member of the Patriot Front and the issues surrounding um, uh, uh, him uh, uh, are being handled administratively by the party and you must have read that he has, uh, he has been written to by the party and as a, a law-abiding member of the party uh, we will make him avail himself and deal with these matters administratively. So for now, uh, we could have allowed him to say anything, but until uh, his issues are concluded by the party, uh, we will allow him to have some uh, uh, privacy. So just for you, uh, even for you as members of the, the, the press, uh, because you have read, um, we have read a lot of stories covered about him, but he's still here and uh, we, uh, going to uh, uh, as as as, as uh, we are uh, going to make sure that he responds to the issues that the party would want him to respond to, and uh, at an opportune time, he will uh, be allowed to uh, share what he would love to share with the members of the party and the public. So thank you very much uh, uh, once again, and uh, Honourable Mungandua, welcome. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Chief. Uh, at this moment, I would like to call upon uh, our leader of opposition to come and summarize uh, the, the whole issues which have uh, been discussed and uh, to wind up uh, our interaction. I call upon you, leader of opposition. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Honorable. I recognize the presence of uh, the whips members of Central Committee, honorable members that have spoken uh, before me, members of the press. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank you for your continued support. Uh, this platform offers uh, our people out there yet another uh, opportunity to learn more about what is happening in Parliament and also in the country generally. You know that uh, the procedures of Parliament are governed by standing orders and sometimes uh, we are unable to exhaust all the business on the floor of the house. And we take advantage of, the, of this platform to be able to explain certain things and clarify a certain outstanding matters. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, countrymen and women, today we have uh, Honorable Charles Milupi uh, joining the list of ministers uh, against whom we raise motions of censure. We had a meeting with the whips this morning. Uh, we are basically uh, finalizing, assembling these motions uh, to be presented uh, before 
the floor of the house soon. And the reason for a moving emotion of uh, censure against Honorable Charles Milopi, because he came to the floor of the house and lied to the nation and indeed to the house that he had uh, tendered on the floor of the house a copy of the dis deposit slip uh, of 65 million kwacha. He went against the order of Madam Speaker who ordered him to bring a deposit slip. He lied to the whole nation. He came with a bundle of documents that did not contain a deposit slip as earlier required of him. So that is a very, very serious offense against our rules on the floor of the house. <coughs> I'm sure a comrade Charles Milupi, in his limited wisdom, he thought would not survey the documents that he tendered on the table. But we've been pursuing this matter very seriously because it involves a lot of money. We took a lot of interest and surveyed the documents and discovered that the deposit slip was not among the documents that he brought on the floor of the house. So we have taken up this matter seriously and we want to uh, censure him for lying on the floor of the house and lying to the many Zambians that were waiting to see that deposit slip. Ladies and gentlemen, countrymen and women, that mysterious deposit slip eluded the auditor and everybody else, including, you know, uh, Parliament. That is the most expensive deposit slip Zambia has ever uh, had. It has just disappeared. God knows where that deposit slip is. As the auditor was explaining, my, com my, my, my dear friend, member of Parliament from Ufuria, the question here, let's go to original position. The original position was that the Auditor General said there is no money in Control 99. That's all. I'm an auditor myself in my earlier <coughs> training. So for me, that's a starting point. Before we even go far, the Auditor General says the 65 million is not in Control 99. And the Minister has not responded to that query. Nobody has explained as to why the Auditor General was unable to see the 65 million in that account. And that's where the problem is. So that deposit slip is not there as far as I'm concerned. It's not there because that money was stolen. Comrade Miller, for me, I'll, I'll not wait. We, we can't wait. There's nothing to wait for. <laughs> Honorable. Look, the Auditor General had interaction with the audit client for some time. They were unable to see the 65 million. They were unable to see the deposit slip. He raised a management letter. The minister has had an opportunity to come to the floor of the house on two occasions. And that deposit slip is not there. And you, we want us to still wait for him to come back to the floor of the house. Martin. Giving him an opportunity now to come with other documents that you may not want to speculate on. The honorable member is talking about Matero. I don't know what is in Matero <laughs> in relation to you know the deposit slips that may be brought on the floor of the house. Okay? We don't want to think about Matero. We don't want any documents from Matero to be tendered on the floor of the house. Yeah, so for me, I'm saying, uh, uh, countrymen and women, what is clear is that that 65 million was stolen. What we're supposed to be talking about now is that let the law enforcement agency swing into action and bring to book the, 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 the criminals that uh, took advantage of that money. That's all. Release Imano Mwamba, release Zumani, release Andy and Thompson. Those are innocent. What Zambians want is to see who took advantage of that 65 million. The stories about money going to students, those are stories. We, 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 we understand the procedures through which approvals are done. We sit in that house. We never saw that. We never saw that request. So countrymen and women, we are dealing with a government that is, not, that is dishonest. And remember that um, I want to take my hat off to Comrade Stumbekom um, Sukotwane. He's an honorable gentleman. There's a reason why he didn't come to, to stand by this uh, particular de defense and defend this position. Honorable Msokotwane took leave conveniently because he wanted to preserve his integrity. Comrade Msokotwane, we all know him, you know, he's a gentleman with impeccable repute. And to be forced to come and defend a position like that, he said, no, let me take leave. Let somebody else do it. So we all know the embarrassment that Comrade Nusukotwana saved himself from. Could you imagine that the finance minister now, negotiating debt restructuring, <laughs> negotiating with the IMF, he would have been caught up in this 65 million web. 
He simply removed himself from there. He said, look, I've got a much bigger assignment to try and save Zambia, restructure Zambia's debt, and save the many lives from dying out of shortage of drugs and many other things. So please excuse me, let somebody else do it. Comrade Musokotwane, on that point alone, I wish to salute you. You are a gentleman, you did the right thing. You left it up to others who could take such careless risks to come and destroy their reputations on the floor of the house by bringing, you know, questionable documents. Comrade Musokotwane, continue on that trajectory. There may be a gleam of hope that we may have one or two honest people in the UPND. Maybe one or two. Comrade Musokotwane may just be one of them. Because the rest of them have got, uh, you, know, you, you know, questionable uh, reputations as it were. So there's a reason why Honorable Musokotwane was not the one to come and defend that very lousy position. Because that deposit slip is just not there. The money was misused. Suddenly, like I said last time, in Bemba we have a saying, from nowhere, we, saw, we have seen Tantame now everywhere in Freedom Way, leaders are giving money directly. Yes. We are seeing people, uh, this Jito, uh, from nowhere, Jito is liquid. He appears at shopping malls just giving money carelessly to money changers. Aren't you suspicious? From, from where? From nowhere, Jito is liquid. Leaders in the UPND are going to Freedom Way. People are lined up and they stand to Something that they condemn. And on the other side, 65 million is missing. So Zambians, let's not be fooled. That 65 million has been stolen by criminals within the UPND government. Those cri the criminals have taken advantage and stolen 65 million kwacha. For me, there is no deposit slip that anyone will bring on that floor of the house that I respect. Because they missed an opportunity on two occasions. We didn't need a bunch of documents. We only needed one page copy of a deposit slip. That's all. Comrade uh, Charles Milopi brought a bunch. When the order by Madam Speaker was bring the dead deposit slip, he brought a bunch. And for any discerning uh, person, we became suspicious. Why has he brought a bunch instead of the one page? We decided to look through. He thought we would not look through those documents. We did. And there's no deposit slip whatsoever. So he lied to the, uh, the house. He lied to the nation. <coughs> and that's for which reason we are going to move a motion of censure. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, this is very clear that uh, we have a government, a very, da a very dangerous uh, uh, a party in government that is ready, is on a war path to plunder any resource that they find along the way. A typical example is the 65 million kwacha. They have gone all over, you know, uh, confiscating, impounding vehicles so that they take advantage of them. So the fight against corruption cannot be won when those that are fighting corruption are the corrupt themselves. When you look at the document that uh, brought to light the issue of the 65 million, the same document talked about officers earning allowances that they did not work for. Now, this is the same offense that the officers at the Auditor General's office were suspended for. So we do not know why, up to now, there is no action against officers at the Anti-Corruption Commission who got allowances that they did not work for. In terms of evidence, whether the evidence was illegally obtained, under the rules of evidence, even illegally obtained evidence is evidence. So we want an investigation and action to be taken against officers at the SEC who were busy earning allowances for doing no work. Because that's the same offense for which the officers at the Auditor General's office were, were, were charged with. Now we have a situation now where because of that particular report, officers at the Auditor General's office have all been removed and sent all over the shore different departments. Now what kind of government do we have? We have a government that does not want to look at itself in the mirror because the picture is very ugly. Every reasonable government 
wait for an audit report to be able to understand and know how they are positioning themselves and how they are governing the country. This particular government is dead scared to look at itself in the mirror, and that mirror is the audit report. The FIC report is already out. 6.1 billion worth of questionable transactions. Ladies and, gen and gentlemen, you remember how President Haka Inde Ichilema and his MPs would get excited in the past whenever the auditor, the, the, the FIC report was out. Have you heard any of them talking about the FIC report? Countrymen and women, there is 6.1 billion that has been plundered according to the FIC report. And the president is quiet. The president is saying that they are now in the Champions League. Maybe yes, because of the amounts that uh, are being looted. Those amounts can only belong to the Champions League. Yes. The amounts that are being plundered are colossal. They can only belong to the Champions League. 6.1 billion. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, we want to say that uh, we have a corrupt government in place. The issue of Sensele Mine, an operation sponsored by government officials within KCM, is still going on and still outstanding. There's been no response from government. Our members of parliament, whilst on duty, looking at um, illicit financial flows, visited KCM and they found a mechanized syndicated mining operation within KCM. People at KCM have been asked not to question that operation. When you ask about that operation, you are labeled PF, fired and transferred. So we are dealing with a government that is there to oppress citizens. Citizens should not question. And today, you want to promise the people that um, you will restructure the mining sector. They are not in a hurry. They won't do it. Why? Because the criminals in UPND who are benefiting from sincerely mining operation would like that operation to continue so they can continue collecting the money. That's what it is. So ladies and gentlemen, when you're talking about corruption, you're talking about the UPND. Grand corruption. I remember one, one uh, the opposition leader, it must have been Dr. Fred Membe, uh, talking about other governments uh, you know, may have been stealing petty cash. Now we have a government that is uh, full of grand corruption. These are just a few examples that we're giving. For me, and for us and my colleagues, members of parliament, we became very suspicious when they began to disturb the office of the Auditor General. Because the office of the Auditor General is an office created by the Constitution. This is an office that is created to ensure that constitutional safeguards are not undermined. The moment you undermine that office, you begin to allow a constitutional safeguards to be undermined. So that office plays a, a central role to constitutionalism and how a government must obey and respect constitution provisions. So this is the government that we have in place today. Uh, the other point that uh, Honorable Campion touched on is uh, what Honorable Jack Mwimbu has been struggling to, to try and justify. The truth of the matter is that we know we are not above the law, but as members of parliament, we enjoy certain privileges. Uh, we believe that uh, if a member has uh, you know, been found we, 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 with some questions to answer, they simply should be given a call out to appear before the police. Now, because there are no offenses that these people are committing, it's pure persecution and harassment. They would rather dramatize it. Now, our fear is police action is going to cause a very big problem not too long from now. What happened to Comrade Mwamba? Residents of that area began to react. They were now shouting slogans, we want change. They can't take that anymore. So it's a warning to the IG that uh, you should not necessarily conduct yourselves in a manner that will bring about breach of peace. The people losing patience. People reacted. That is the truth. If the police were conducting the activities in a professional manner, why did the police go back and confiscate phones of all those innocent citizens that were taking videos of what had transpired? Why did they confiscate those phones? That was an admittance that indeed they had done something wrong which they didn't want the general public to see. So, Inspector General of Police, you have talked about sending the police for training. My position is, let's start with the top command. 
the top command need to be trained. I think there's a lot of cadres that have come into the police service and they think it's a police force where they've got to use brutal force uh, you know, to arrest people or uh, bring people to, 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 to the police. So conduct thorough training so that uh, we have a professional police service. It's no longer a police force. Many of the people that have been called from retirement still have that mentality of the police force. They may need to be brought in line to understand that it's a police service. They are supposed to offer a service to the people, not what we are seeing now. Now, lastly, I want to talk about um, the comrade Dimano Mwamba, uh, uh, young Andy and young Thompson. They are being punished for allegedly circulating a document, which the government itself said was a fake document. Now, ladies and gentlemen, look at the weightage they are attaching to this quote-unquote, fake document. Who bothers so much about the fake document? How much effort or energy do you want to expend on a fake document? Wouldn't you rather just ignore it as a fake document? You make a statement and tell everybody to ignore it. So the position where we stand now, we are now beginning to doubt whether or not those are fake documents. Maybe the church needs to go back to those documents and read the contents of those documents. They may not be fake documents after all. The police, as it is now, are constructively authenticating those documents. I'm now persuaded to think those are not fake documents. Looking at the reaction, this reaction from the police is just the fear that they have about the possible reaction from the church. Because the church has now become aware of what their evil intentions are. I doubt whether those are fake documents. Because the police themselves are authenticating those documents. We didn't bother as MPs. The moment the government said they were fake, we forgot about them. We are now forced to look for those documents and just try and understand what is in those documents. Maybe the church should also look at those documents. They may not be fake after all. Otherwise, the police would not have paid so much attention to those documents. Honorable Mwamba is in there. The police know very well that he did not author those documents. Those documents were on social media much earlier than they were posted on whatever blog that was uh, uh, attached to Comrade Mwamba. But my point is, if you look at the force, if you look at the attention, the energy, the weight that is being attached to those documents, they may not be fake after all. And uh, if they're not fake, it's very, very unfortunate that the government can have such evil plans against the church. We are now forced to talk about the substance of those documents because the government itself is giving weight to those documents. I had occasion to read those documents. It's very, very unfortunate. And uh, if at all that is what they are planning to do, then we have a very big problem with this government. The church has a big problem with this government. So ladies and gentlemen, I just thought we you know, we could uh, comment on some of these things that are very topical. Uh, but remember that um, uh, you vote for members of parliament are voted for to represent you. Uh, ministers are expected to be professional and ethical in the manner that they conduct business, especially on the floor of the house. When ministers begin to lie, uh, Comrade Muto Piri lied that there was enough maize when there wasn't. Comrade Sylvia Masebo lied when she said there were sufficient drugs when there wasn't. Now, Comrade Milupi lied that he brought a deposit slip when he did not. So these are the three cases that we want you to look out for. We are assembling motions of censure so that uh, these ministers can uh, be brought to book. Ladies and gentlemen, with those few remarks, I would like to thank you. Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes, as uh, Comrade Chisanga earlier commented, I think the confusion around uh, 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 the vice president's office is on account of the fact that uh, this government is very shy to announce that the president has gone out of the country and that uh, the vice president as provided for by the constitution is now acting president. I don't know why. This should be very easy to simply say the president has traveled out. Uh, Vice President Mutai Nalumango is now acting president. I don't know why it should that should be difficult. That is the reason why citizens are now speculating. 
you know i mean uh, the vice president nalumango was a running mate to president akende ichilema and that's how he won <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah, the reason why we respect uh, as leader of government business is because she was voted for together with the president. Nobody should really get the position of the vice president and feel that maybe you can just uh, ignore her and really get her. She was voted for at the same time with President Naka in the Hichilema. President Naka in the Hichilema won because he had the vice president in the name of Mutare Nalumango, who should act as president whenever he steps out. And there must be a statement made to say the acting president now is a uh, Madame Mutai Nalumang. Then nobody will speculate as to you know uh, who is president or whether she has uh, uh, you know resigned or not. So to want to relegate the position of government, we are members of parliament. We are here to protect and defend our constitution. The fact that we are in the opposition does not mean we should support the wrongdoing by the government trying to relegate the position of the vice president. She remains vice president. She remains acting president whenever the president is out. So what's so difficult about that? So please, let's accord respect to the vice president. And I'm happy that uh, Honorable Jack Mwimbu, as acting leader of government, business, clarified that she hasn't resigned. So the speculations are generated by the way government is acting whenever it comes to dealing with matters surrounding the vice president. She was voted for like President Naka and Lema was. And that's how he won, because he had that uh, vice president has running mate. Yes, so uh, the president is out there, I think on a mission to try and broker peace between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, we will not want to say so much about it, but we want to remind you that um, look at the difficult position President Daka and Ichilima finds himself in. He already took a position in that matter, that you're supporting Ukraine. Yeah. Can you imagine how difficult it is for him now, even as he faces the other people, because his position is gone. So that's why we, we've said, as a country, there is a, a, a long tradition that we have kept. Our forefathers, our leaders, and so on, they remained non-aligned. President Kaunda was very strong at that because he would go and negotiate with Saddam Hussein. He took a neutral position. The entire world would wait for KK, the Zambian president, to go and intervene. He would go personally and meet Saddam Hussein and be able to, 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 to broker a peace. So even as our president has accompanied other leaders from the region, I know that he may be in a very uncomfortable position because of the earlier position that he took. And uh, like we've always said, uh, you know, it's work in progress. We hope that he has uh, learned a thing or two uh, such that in future he will not be in a hurry to take positions because then he would find himself in very uncomfortable position like he has found himself um, in now. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much to the media.